بعد Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, sustainer and controller of all that happens in the universe and indeed the ultimate abode of bliss is for those who are conscious of Allah, the creator and the sustainer and there is no hatred for anyone except those who insist on doing wrong and we invoke the peace and blessings of Allah upon his noble messenger the last and the seal of all the prophets and messengers his family his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time my dear brothers and sisters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I guess by now we have all recovered from the Eid hangover uh, brothers and sisters we hear very often that as Muslims it is important and necessary for us to engage in da'wah that is in inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet when we hear the term da'wah the picture that comes to mind is that of a person who stands at an intersection a busy intersection and preaches to people now this is certainly <coughs> one form, if you like, of da'wah to Allah and it's an important form, mind you but the reality is this is a form of da'wah that is not applicable to most of us yet we're all required to engage in inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the Prophet to announce to people the, the nature of his mission as the messenger of Allah and those who follow him as well not just him but his followers قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنْ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبْعَنِي Say this is my way my mission What is it? أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ I invite to the way of Allah I invite to Allah the, the one true God and creator but with knowledge I and those who follow me. So if many of us or most of us are not capable perhaps or suited to doing preaching, then how then are we supposed to do that? Very often you've heard by simply living Islam, adhering to its principles, its values and its teachings, so that the people around can notice the, the various preach, uh, principles of Islam. Now I'm saying all of this because last week I had to do a presentation at one of the community colleges in Scarborough. Uh, the students of course are, uh, are adult students. They're not like students just out of high school. These are grown people who are looking for a career in uh, law enforcement as well as health care. Because these are the two professions that very often a person would run into a, a Muslim individual. The thing is, there is a sister, a Muslim sister, who works for the college. And all she did was to suggest to one instructor, look, why don't you do this? So sometimes, da'wah may not necessitate that you stand up and preach. But it may simply come down to making a suggestion. You know, hooking them up with someone. So she gave them my number and they called me and I talked with the instructor who is a former police and now he's uh, 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 teaching law enforcement. Um, Alhamdulillah, you know, the session turned out to be a really good session. But what I also realized from doing the presentation is that many non-Muslims don't really know much about Islam. We may think they know a lot about Islam, but they don't. Some of the most basic things they don't know. Because after all, they may learn their Islam, as we say, from, uh, from CNN or, or the television. Uh, I'll give you some examples. There was one student, and this is a lady. And from some of the questions she asked as well, I figured that she's Christian. But uh, when I mentioned Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam, she said to me, 
Is Muhammad and Allah the same? We know that Christians generally, they, they equate Jesus alayhi salam with God Almighty. So I don't know if she assumed that it would be the same with Islam. Uh, or she really didn't know. Or perhaps she heard differently. But of course this was an opportunity for me to go into some details. Not a lot, but some details about the Islamic perspective on monotheism and on God. Because my presentation wasn't really about that. The presentation was about issues that law enforcement people and people in healthcare need to be aware of when dealing with Muslim clients. So, de dealing with the details or some of the details of Aqidah really wasn't a direct part of my presentation. But these questions, MashaAllah, offered me the opportunity to get into these issues. So eventually the presentation took close to like an hour and a half. We thought originally it might have been for 45 minutes. So I got a chance, mashaAllah, to, to explain what we believe about Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And then she asked, same person asked the question about, about Jesus. And again, I got the chance to explain the Islamic perspective of Isa alayhi salam. Highlighting the fact that as Muslims, we do believe in his miraculous birth. In fact, she also asked the question that you, she said, you Muslims then don't believe in the coming back of Jesus. So I told her, you know what? We also believe in the coming back of Jesus. And I explained to them that Allah be exalted. Not only is the birth of Isa alayhi salam miraculous, but the way in which Allah saved him when the people plotted to kill him is also miraculous. So, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, I realized that sometimes it's just little things we can do to really take part or fulfill our role in doing da'wah. So don't think when we hear each one of us is supposed to be engaged in da'wah, that we all have to be preachers standing at intersections across the city and preaching to people. No. That has its place. But for many of us or most of us, we can still engage in da'wah by doing little things, you know. Something as simple as making a suggestion, connecting uh, a group of people or your workplace with an imam or a sheikh who can, uh, or who is qualified and knowledgeable enough to do presentations of this nature and to answer questions. Sometimes it is also engaging your, your own co-workers in, in conversations and giving them some details. Because as Muslims, we ought to know some details, right? Every Muslim ought to know the difference between Allah the Exalted as God and the Creator and everyone else or everything else, including Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Every Muslim needs to know that Muhammad is not God, period. And to understand the Islamic perspective of who God is and what the creation is. So I realized that subhanAllah, there are actually a lot of opportunities that you and I can, can really make use of to inform people about the message of Islam. <coughs> it doesn't have to be big events. You know, some, some, some event held at the CNE or the convention center or anything like that. No, something very small in which you talk even to one person. One person, it doesn't have to be 10 or 20, just one. Remember what the Prophet alayhi salam was busy with, with the leaders of Quraysh. And this one blind man came to interrupt him, to ask him about Allah's message. The Prophet ﷺ frowned and turned away from the man. Yet Allah the Exalted sent revelation. Revelation in, in the form of Quran. In the form of Quran that is recited. So that everyone who comes after Muhammad ﷺ would know about this event. And in this revelation in Surah Abasa wa Tawalla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the Prophet alayhi salam that even one person is worth your time and effort. Just one. You don't need two or more. You don't need a bunch. Just one. This is good enough. So we, if we realize that we don't need huge forums, a lot of people, and we also don't need great events, sometimes little conversations, mashaAllah, can do the trick. 
then each one of us can invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill our responsibility. So let us not think that da'wah is always preaching and you know we feel, oh I'm not equipped to do this, therefore I can't. No, each one of us has something that we can do and that's what we should really focus on. You know, recently we went through the Eid. That was a very nice time. In fact, one of the brothers suggested, and I did suggest this to the, to the brothers and sisters, that Eid is coming up, you know. It's a good time to perhaps bring some sweets to work. And as a result, you're now able to engage your co-workers, the people around you, in a conversation about Eid. That might lead to Ramadan, although they might have uh, learned about Ramadan during the whole month of Ramadan. And, and in fact, that one thing, that one little event there, could also open up uh, doors to other questions. So you get the opportunity, mashaAllah, to now engage people and talk about the Islamic perspective on certain issues. This is a lot easier than to, let's say, out of the blue, call a bunch of people who work around you and say, sit down guys, I want to tell you about Islam. Right? A lot of people are not into that. They, they, they would feel that you're trying to sort of, you know, push Islam down on them. But when events like Eid and Ramadan and other things happen, you know, these are the, 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 the doorways that we can use, mashallah, to engage people and, and, and perhaps they'll be a little bit more receptive. And we need not worry about convincing them. You know, very often people ask me questions. Uh, in Ramadan, I know at the IIT on one Friday evening, uh, there was a youth program, sort of a seminar, that mashallah, a bunch of youths got together, and so they, they, they planned it, and they were able to invite speakers and so on. And one of the questions that, that came up to us, myself, Sheikh Abdullah Hakim, were all part of the, the seminar there. But one of the questions that keep coming up is, how do I convince this, and how do I convince that? The reality is, our mission, brothers and sisters, is not to convince people. Our job is simply to present a message to them and leave them alone to decide on their own what they want to do with that information. That's our mission. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly tells the Prophet والسلام, and tells people, وَمَا عَلَىٰ رَسُولِنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَابُ الْمُبِينَ There is no more obligation on our Prophet and on our Messenger except الْبَلَابُ الْمُبِينَ uh, a clear conveyance of the message, that's what it is. Proper conveyance of the message. So if we realize this, then subhanAllah, there is a lot of da'wah that we can engage in. And it may seem insignificant or small, but it is not. It is not. Like I said, even if it's one person, you get the chance to talk a little bit about Eid and about a few Islamic perspectives. That's all you need. You don't need a lot of information at one time. So perhaps, brothers and sisters, what we can do is look for these opportunities in terms of events and so on that come up that will open a door and will uh, help us to engage with, 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 with people around us in terms of informing them about uh, the message of Islam. This is how we do da'wah every day, all, all our lives. At the very least, at the very, very least, we should live the message of Islam. There is no other form of da'wah that's most powerful and most far-reaching than living the message itself. Because this is what the Prophet ﷺ did. It is, it is his living of the message. When people saw in his life and in his actions and in his dealings, they saw the principles and the teachings of Islam. And we know that Islam spread to places like Indonesia and Malaysia and even India, parts of India, through the interactions that the local population had with the Muslims who were traders. And most of these men were not shuyukh who went there to preach, missionaries so to speak. No, they went there as traders, but they were Muslims. So in their dealings with the people, they observed the Islamic values and principles and teachings. And people recognized that. Qualities of honesty of truthfulness, of keeping your promise, fulfilling your word, of, of compassion, of tolerance, of kindness. People realize this. 
And when they investigated, subhanAllah, people embraced Islam and now uh, Indonesia is what? The country with the largest Muslim population in the world. SubhanAllah. So all of us brothers and sisters, there is something we can do. There is something we can do at work in particular. Just look for these little events and inshallah use that opportunity to engage people. Uh, even like I said, even if it's not you preaching about Islam to them or telling them about Islam, connecting them with someone who can perhaps come in and do a presentation, mashallah is wonderful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. And may He help us to constantly engage in not only living this message of Islam, but, but also spreading the message of Islam to others. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed. And may He also inspire us and motivate us to hold firmly to that message and to live by it.